You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm happy to have you here on our first of one of two of our Cabral House Calls of the Weekend. This is where we answer our community's questions each and every week. People write in at stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. I answer your questions in the order they come in. It usually takes just a couple of weeks, and I'm always happy to do that. Love being able to provide this service To those people who maybe haven't found their answers yet, whether it's wellness, weight loss, or anti-aging, and we usually get to about six questions or so per show, today I'm hoping to get to even more, and the reason is some of them are a little bit more straightforward. So without further ado, let's get right into today's show. Okay, so the first question is from Morgan. He or she writes in, hi, Dr. Ball and crew. Many thanks to you and your staff for the incredible work you do. Do you have any suggestions for overcoming secondary amenorrhea. I am a 30-year-old female lacking menstruation for the past 18 months. I'm hypothyroid and have digestive health issues, including parasites, candida, SIBO. And for those of you who don't know what SIBO is, it's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I was previously on a keto diet and had additional weight loss from chronic digestive issues. I believe both factors and high stress levels contributed my body shutting down menstruation. I am gluten, dairy, and grain-free and almost back to normal body weight. I plan to complete your parasite and candida protocol. In the meantime, do you have any lifestyle, herbal, or dietary recommendations for getting back my period? Strategies for increasing carbs without worsening candida and SIBO symptoms? Thanks for taking the time to answer these questions. I sincerely appreciate it. Cheers, Morgan. Okay, Morgan, your question is very straightforward. It's not the simplest process, but it's very straightforward. So for those of you who don't know what amenorrhea is, it's essentially a female during her menstruating years to actually not have that menstrual cycle anymore. So she's not getting her period. Why is that? Almost always, not not almost always, always a stress-induced situation within the body. Now, the stress could be coming from digestive. It could be coming from relationships. It could be coming from losing too much weight, but all of those are stresses in the body. Now, the body will not it will not allow itself to get pregnant if you're under that much stress. And the cycle stops and it stops because we might have a lack or a woman might have a lack of progesterone. And that can happen because we have an increase and influx in cortisol and the progesterone could simply be being shunted and and shuttled towards cortisol. Instead, this is going to take, it shouldn't take a lot of time. I would say about three to four months, three to four menstrual cycles, calming the body down calming the nervous system down. And in terms of all your dietary and all your recommendations, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to do the parasite protocol to start. That's going to be 42 days, okay, six weeks. And then you're going to go right into the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. Now, that protocol will give you the exact foods that you should be eating. And you can also listen to my podcast on transitioning from a low-carb diet. So you can literally type into stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, transitioning off a low-carb diet. And that show will pop up and then you'll get all of your answers right there. But the truth is you will just simply do the parasite protocol and then you will do the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol that we affectionately refer to as our CBO protocol. So I hope that helps. It's going to be really straightforward. We outline everything that you need. And of course, you can join our group, which is cabralsupportgroup.com and we'll provide the support that you need as you're going through that protocol. So best of luck, Morgan. You'll do great. I know you'll get right back on track. Priscilla is up next. Hi, Dr. Paul. I listen to your podcast all the time, and this is an issue that I have never heard you talk about. I was curious if you have any background with my situation. My son is now five and a half. About two years ago, he woke up and one of his eyes was turned in. He went to about seven different eye doctors and surgeons who told us different things, and then we started working with a functional medicine doctor, chiropractor. We have been gluten-free, dairy-free for over a year. There's been some improvement in his eye, but it's still turned in much of the time. Have you heard of this? 
or have your experience working with it, thank you so much for any help or insights you may have. Okay. So I can tell you this right now that this is not my area of expertise. And I told you always on the Cabral concept that I will always be upfront with it. The eye being turned in. So of course I've studied this. It's called esotropia. And esotropia is essentially that eyelid, that eye turning in. And again, although it's not my ner- it's not my area of expertise, I do know from a functional medicine perspective, from a functional medicine perspective, that you have to look at what is affecting the nervous system. And this just makes sense because what's causing the eye to do that? So you have to look at a neurological based function. So of course I'm looking at inflammation, but what would affect the nervous system? Well, candida, bacterial overgrowth from the gut. So you might want to run an organic acids test and definitely hands down, definitely running a hair tissue mineral analysis to look for heavy metals. So I, I couldn't recommend those two options enough. The hair tissue mineral analysis and the organic acids test, the nice thing on our website now is that we actually give and we're able to give discounts on bulk lab packages. So you're going to save at least $100 off the two of those combined. I apologize everyone for the sirens in the background. I don't want to stop the podcast because we have fire trucks and ambulances and police cars going by in Boston. But um, hopefully, Priscilla, that helps you. I understand this is not an easy time. I understand how you must be feeling as a parent. So what I would do for one of my daughters, if this happened, I would run a hair tissue mineral analysis. I would run a food sensitivity test. I would run the organic acid test. If you can't run all of them, then I would cut out that food sensitivity test. I would do dairy-free, gluten-free, corn-free, maybe start to look at lectins as well. So that's exactly what I would do. And then follow what the lab tests tell you. Remember, you have to start testing at some point. That's my honest opinion. Can't figure it out. It's been some time. You have to test those underlying root cause of what's going on within the body because sometimes it just doesn't make sense. But what makes sense is when you find the toxicities and you remove them from the body and you find the deficiencies, what you'll find on those two tests as well, maybe low B12, maybe low B vitamins, those things affect the nervous system as well. That is exactly what I would do. Christine is up next. Christine is asking, I have recently been diagnosed with leaky gut through a food sensitivity test. My naturopathic doctor recommends glutamine repair powder, but it has corn derivatives associated with it. I would like to use Cabral's gut building protocol basic instead, a three-month supply. Is this the correct substitute? Please let me know so I can purchase this as soon as possible. Thanks, Christine. So everyone who's listening to this right now, if you're just asking for a product recommendation, please just email support at stephencabral.com or support at drcabraldetox.com or join our free Facebook group at cabralsupportgroup.com. So a lot of supports in there, right? And Christine, I'm happy to have you actually email in for the Ask Cabral, but it's probably been three weeks since you asked this question because keep in mind, the Ask Cabral only gets seen by me and that takes like three weeks time because I'm just going in order people writing them in. So if it's just a product or lab recommendation and you don't need my exact opinion that you're okay with my team or my health coach, they know the substitutes. So yes, it's called Healthy Gut Support. I actually just did a podcast on this yesterday. So definitely tune into that one. That was a fun one. And it was called, Is This Supplement Better Than Bone Broth? Now that was a really fun one because I just showed people that you don't always need to be doing what what the mainstream media is saying. You can actually use other products to get even better results. So like you were saying, that's called healthy gut support. That is what's going to give you everything your body needs, not just the glutamine. Yes, the glutamine is number one, but you're going to get the zinc, the aloe vera, the DGL, really great stuff. So that highest recommendation, that is exactly it. And that is what helps to rebuild the gut mucosa. All right, Dia or Dia is up next. Hello, I'm asking to be advised on the proper lab test to purchase from you, Dr. Brawl. My husband, Sean, has suffered several years with thyroid issues, had his right lobe removed at 21 and told it was benign. At age 49, he recently was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's disease. He has also been done for a sleep study for sleep apnea and sleep issues, stumbled upon your podcast, so thankful that we found you, also convinced this is the place we need to be for help for my husband to get his health right. He's been suffering since his early 20s and now is 50 years old many other things in this. So again, everyone can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. As always, click on today's show. That will always give you the up-to-date information on all of these questions in depth. You can read the show notes. 
Can you please advise the proper lab test to get started? Okay, really great questions. Happy to answer these for you, of course. So hands down, hands down, the number one thing that we want to do is the thyroid adrenal hormone test. Okay, we'll link that up for you. Happy to do that. What's that going to show? Is it's going to show all of the numbers that you really need. So it's going to show TSH, T3, T4, TPO. So it's going to show those Hashimoto antibodies, but it will also show adrenal function through cortisol, DHEA, estrogen, progesterone, and did I miss one? Cortisol, if I didn't name that already. So that's absolutely what I would recommend. And we're happy to help on that front as well. Again, if you anybody wants to ask about what I recommend for lab tests and you need that answer right away, just go to cabralsupportgroup.com, free Facebook group, nothing, no cost to join. I'm trying to find as many ways as possible that I can kind of replicate myself throughout the day. And that's one way that we've been able to find is that my health coaches and myself can make those recommendations right there. We're just looking for positive people. If you're a negative person, keep listening to the Mindset and Motivation Mondays. Get yourself positive. We're going to help you with anything that you're struggling with. Just bring your positivity to the group, bring your hope to the group, and we'll be there to support you in any way that we can. All right, Irene is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. This week, my 10-year-old nephew was taken into Children's Hospital here in Houston. After many blood work tests, a colonoscopy, upper GI, etc., he has been diagnosed with Crohn's. As I type this, they are doing an infusion with meds through an IV. What can be done with to help him in healing? What I understand, there is no cure for Crohn's. Please let me know what his parents need to do to help him manage this. As a 10-year-old, I think it's going to be tough to do, although he's only been sick for the past month. His primary said he's lost 27 pounds in the last two years. Thank you for any help. Okay, so clearly if you lose 27 pounds, if you go backwards at all at 10 years old, there's a serious issue, okay? So I know he's just been diagnosed, but that's just because that's the problem with conventional medicine. You wait till something goes really wrong and then you're like, oh, okay, now you have this disease. Keep in mind, no disease is permanent. I can't think of a disease right now. You can think, I can think of congenital defects that are permanent, that's for sure. I can think of genetics that are play in the background, but I can't think of anything that's permanent. So here's the thing. I would hate for this 10-year-old child to believe that he has to deal with this for the rest of his life. A couple things to keep in mind. Crohn's disease. You will want to run a food sensitivity test, a hair tissue mineral analysis, and an organic acids test if possible. If I could only do one, I would do the organic acids test. If I could do two, I would do the hair tissue mineral analysis. And if I, if I could do three, I would do the food sensitivity test. Here's the problem. Crohn's disease, although yes, it is in the gut, it is absolutely part of the psychology. Now, I will never say that it's all in someone's head, but what I will say is the head affects the body, right? So psychology affects physiology as well. Crohn's disease, colitis, Yes, gluten and dairy exacerbate it. Sometimes egg whites as well. Gluten and dairy, they have to be eliminated from this child's diet. Maybe not for the rest of his life, but for 12 weeks. Gluten, dairy, gone. All cow's milk, gone. Milk, gone. All that cheese, gone. You have to do that because you have to get rid of the inflammatory foods that cause the majority of the issues. Gluten, dairy, those are the two main exacerbators. Okay, so what else can we do to help? Well, here's the thing. We have to get the whole family on board because something is stressing this child. What is it? Is it just gut based? Well, maybe, but I want to find out what's going on in the family. Is there a certain stressor? Because I, I need to know, I need people to understand that this is a holistic viewpoint. That means the life, the stress. Is this child stressed from school? Is it competition? Is it what is going on in this child's life that's making them so stressed? And if it's just the gut, okay, well, what can we do? Easy to digest foods, warmed foods, all the foods should be cooked. It should be nourishing. Smoothies, purees, soups, stews, broths. We really want this child to heal from the inside out. And after we go through, if he needs to do the candida protocol, fine. But then, you know, I'm a, I'm a GAPS practitioner as well. And I don't use the GAPS specifically. But remember, you know, listening to the Cabral concept, that I don't use anything specifically. I'm very happy for Dr. Natasha McBride's work with the gut and psychology syndrome. And I'm very appreciative of learning and kind of back in the day, I, I be, when she was actually teaching herself, I learned from her directly. Uh, amazing. She was in Russia. And, and anyway, I don't want to go through the whole story, but, and just really looking at, uh, this goes back to, to nourishing traditions. This goes back to just, this is old school 
Ayurvedic based knowledge, warming foods, anti vata foods, calming foods for the gut, healing the gut with something like our healthy gut support. But you need to find out what's going down there first. The healthy gut support, though, for a half a scoop for a child, tremendous at rebuilding that gut wall. And then you have to get rid of the inflammatory foods in the diet as well. That is, um, Irene, that's the place that I would start. Okay. Thank you for asking that. Obviously, I really appreciate the work that you are doing to try to help your nephew. Stephanie is up next. I have one more question for you about cholesterol this time. At my last appointment with my natural doctor, she mentioned she was worried about my cholesterol being too low, which I eat a plant-based diet, so I wasn't surprised it was low. It was 127, and she wants to see it in the 160 to 200 range. My LDL was 70. My HDL was only 42, which I know is low. But I'm guessing this has to do with my overall low cholesterol number. She is encouraging me to try to raise it through adding more oil to my diet in a great amount since I don't eat meat. Do you think I should raise it? And if so, what would you suggest? Thanks. Okay. Yeah, this is a great question. Of course, anytime something can be high and it's a problem, it could be low and it could be a problem. So I agree that your natural doctor is correct. The best range to see your cholesterol is 160 to 200. People will argue that 127 is fine if you're vegan or you're on a plant-based diet. Well, that might be true for a lot of people. The important thing is to look at the total picture. If your estrogen is low, your progesterone is low, your DHEA is low, and your cortisol is low, then your cholesterol is too low. And the reason is that your cholesterol is the precursor to all of those other hormones. So if you lack the energy, the vibrancy, the hair, the skin, the nails, the zest, all of that stuff, the, the libido, the stamina, well, then yeah, we need to raise your cholesterol a little bit because your cholesterol isn't always a bad thing. It's a precursor to good things. And those are the hormones in the body. So I agree. Yeah, 160 to 200, without a doubt, that's my range as well. I don't have as much of a problem with your HDL to your LDL. And the reason is that if you look at your ratio, it's a three to one ratio from your total cholesterol, 127 to your HDL. So it's exactly a three to one, pretty much. So here's the deal, like that's totally fine. It, you want it below five to one. I want it at three to one. And that means like good for cardiovascular health. So overall, your cholesterol is not a big issue. But again, below 140, there is some research showing that there's a greater risk for other health factors, such as more of a catabolic nature to the body, such as cancer, things like that. So what can we do? Well, you could use more coconut oil in your diet if you wanted to. And you could certainly eat more eggs if you wanted to, if you'd like to do that. Even just two eggs a week might be all you need if you're doing none right now. And it doesn't seem that you're vegan. It just seems that you're mainly plant-based. So eggs could be totally fine for you. And if you're vegan, then you might want to add just a tablespoon of coconut oil a day. That might be fine for you as well to raise that. You can increase the HDL typically just by adding in a little bit more olive oil or avocado. Those are monounsaturated fats. That would be great. And of course, um, exercise a little bit if you're not doing that right now, could raise that HDL as well. Stephanie, it looks like overall you're doing great, but a few minor tweaks, you'll be doing even better. Okay, let's do one more question today. It's from Annette. Hi, Dr. Ball. First off, I want to thank you for all you do. I'm a regular listener to your podcast and your insights have dramatically helped me change my outlook on life. Looking forward to listening each and every day. Annette, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. I love that you're listening every day because each day I really try to just add one more new thing. I just keep trying to build off of what we've been doing. I know every, you can step in at any point and start listening to the Cabral concept. So it's not about that, but it is about just gathering the knowledge. And sometimes one podcast doesn't make any sense at all. But after you've listened to another like 10 or 12 or 50, then you're like, oh yes, that podcast, now it makes sense. Because it's hard for me to explain everything in 15, 20 minutes a day. But over time, you can see how everything fits together. And that's how I assimilate my knowledge is that I'm really looking at like, okay, this doesn't make any sense, but in context with this, this, and this, it does. That's how I want you to look at health as well. Okay. So let's go on with your question. This is for her boyfriend, Annette. Okay. Three glaring issues his whole life. No doctor has been able to help him. Wondering if you could suggest something with these three issues. He has IBS-like symptoms, but only in the morning upon waking the whole night if it's really bad. Cutting out dairy seemed to have helped a little bit. Goes through periods of cutting other things as well, like gluten. He struggles with cystic acne. He has very large pores, troubled by acne his whole life. 
The third and probably most prominent symptom is crippling anxiety. It affects his entire life and sidelines him at least once a day. It puts a strain on every aspect of his life, job, relationships, and not to mention his own well-being. Thanks so much for your help and insight. I look very much to hearing your suggestions and advice. Annette, work with people like your boyfriend every single day, honestly, every single day. What happens is when the gut is off, we're looking at IBS-based symptoms, right? So he's eating foods, even healthy foods such as cauliflower or Brussels sprouts, and they're causing fermentation in the gut. So they cause fermentation even from healthy foods. It blows up the intestines, kind of like a balloon, causes gas, causes bloating, causes the body to be uncomfortable. Okay, the body at night goes through its breakdown phase, it's breaking down the foods, it's kind of processing everything. He wakes up in the body, the body it wakes up in the morning, the body's immediately ready to eliminate all of these toxins from his body. He can have loose stool. A lot of things can happen at that point, especially if he's having his biggest meal at night at dinner. Okay, what else can be happening here? Well, of course, with acne, if your intestines are literally spilling bacteria into your blood, your liver is going to get overwhelmed. Your kidneys are going to get overwhelmed after a while, and it can push it through the skin, leading to what I just call dirty blood. Now your skin is getting the bacteria pushed out. Another thing can be testosterone. Testosterone levels could be slightly higher. I'm not thinking that here, but it's a possibility possibility. That's all. Now, the last part is the anxiety. Well, if your gut isn't doing well, it's called your second brain. It's going to send signals to your first brain, or you know, you could debate that all you want, saying something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. You get the signal as anxiety. Your brain can't tell you, or your vagus nerve in your gut can't tell you that you have inflammation down there, that you have small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, that you have you know candida overgrowth, that you have any of these things. So run the organic acids test, Run the food sensitivity test if you want. Run the hair tissue mineral analysis. If you could only pick two, what would I do for you? I would do the organic acids test and I would run the hair tissue mineral analysis and then run the food test last. If not, because with the organic acids test, if we find all of that stuff down there, well, guys are very analytical. Just that's the way it is. So the majority of people listen to the Cabral concept, more than two thirds women, still a lot of guys. Don't get me wrong, a lot of guys listening, but guys are much more analytical. So I find that data really helps. So if, if your boyfriend runs a lab, so he'll see the data. Then he'll do the elimination diet. So that will help with the foods that he's sensitive to anyways. And then he can also do the hair tissue mineral analysis to look for high levels of copper. Higher levels of copper in the hair as well as aluminum or mercury could cause this anxiety as well. I still think it's gut-based, but I want to run that hair tissue mineral analysis as a backup. Again, we give great deals on that, especially this month. And this month, if you order two lab tests, meaning if you order one of our bundles, you actually get a 60-minute coaching call upgrade. That means instead of 30 minutes, you get 60 minutes to talk about the lab results. And do keep in mind that I review every single lab that comes across online or my private practice. So that means you get my recommendations as well. And the health coach takes you through it. I just can't, can't see 200 people, 300 people, whatever it is a month. But what I can do is I can review every lab and make right recommendations so I make sure that everyone is getting the help that they need. So Annette, I know that uh, your boyfriend can get the results that he wants. I mean, really, he can. Anyway, I, I recommend the lab test because guys are analytical. They want the data. But of course, right after you run the labs, start to do the daily Dr. Brawl protocol in the morning. The Dr. Brawl protocol is the all-in-one shake, the daily nutritional support with the greens powder and the probiotic. Or even if you want to do it without the probiotic to save a little bit of money, do that. Get a smoothie in your boyfriend's body. Remember, he's probably not hydrated enough. He needs to flush his system. He needs to detox. Do a 21-day Dr. Ball detox. Just get him flushing the stuff out of his system. That's the most important thing you can do. Run the labs first, then either do the 21-day Dr. Ball detox, seven day if he's only willing to commit for seven days, and keep that smoothie going every morning, okay? Make it for him if you have to. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into another Cabral Concept. Appreciate each and every one of your listens. Thank you for all your reviews on iTunes this week. I read every single review on iTunes. It means the world to me. It gives me energy to continue doing the show. Absolutely love it. Thank you once again. Appreciate it. Take care. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp parts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.